Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here uh, on this 22nd Thursday, the 22nd of February, 2024. Thank you for tuning in. Okay, what's going on here? Well, do you remember, uh, uh, I think it was uh, yesterday or the day before I did a show and I was talking about meteors. I was talking about how we we're coming in from, from very close calls in the last couple of years. And that one flew through our atmosphere. That close, one shaved through our atmosphere. Now, that was a big one, shaved through our atmosphere. I think it was about six months or a year ago. It was a while ago, anyway. I, 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 I registered it on the news, but I don't think I really reported on it. Having trouble with this. Uh... Anyway, just like last night, a massive fireball lit up the sky across a large swath of the United States. And there's pictures of it there. Some people saw it for as long as 20 seconds if they had an unobstructed view of the sky. And it, was, it must have been pretty big. It said a glittering fireball ignited evening skies over a vast se section of the United States, eastern United States, and parts of Canada on Wednesday night as it enters Earth's atmosphere and promptly burned up. The dazzling display was reported by more than 200 observers on the ground in 11 United States states and in Ontario. So it must have been flying up through across the eastern United States. It kind of gives you the trajectory of it. Probably entered into the Atlantic and flew up across uh, the southeastern United States on its way to Ontario, Canada. It... Sometimes they do that. Sometimes they, like, skip off the atmosphere and go back out into space again. This thing could have been really large. I mean, it, we just don't know. Sometimes they don't impact. They're just a grazing blow of the Earth. That might have been what this was, you know. Or it might have impacted, and there maybe there's meteors up. Maybe they can, you know, meteors are worth a lot of money if they can find them. Now... In this danger, how would it says, how would NASA alert the world about an impending asteroid strike? Well, first thing I want to say about this is they really only detect the really large ones. Basically, the Earth killers are the ones that they really able to detect a long time because the small ones, uh, there's a lot more small ones are out there than there are large ones. And the small ones can kind of go undetected because they're much harder to see. But they are tracking the large ones, you know. Uh, it says, a man named Lindsey Johnson leads NASA's Planetary Defense Coordination Office, which tracks near-Earth objects, NEOs. Uh, an NEO is classified as any object that comes within 30 million miles of Earth. He says, I don't have a red phone on my desk or anything, the asteroid expert told Business Insider, but we do have formal procedures which notify of a serious impact would be provided. Now, see, they're telling you right there, a serious impact. In other words, the larger ones. They track them all. They can't see these little tiny ones. Or, or if they do see them, they only see them maybe an hour or two before they're ready to hit. And, you know, when I say tiny ones, some of these tiny ones can cause devastating damage. I mean, uh, cities, like, one of the things I worry about, and I'm concerned about these smaller asteroids coming in, is if the nations out there, like, say, Russia or the United States or, some of the, or China or one of these big nations, if it fools them. And the thinking maybe it's a mil maybe it's military strike or something. In other words, they get fooled by it and thinking that it's a could that happen? Now that's a question I'm asking. You know? And think they're being attacked by an opposing nation when it's really just an asteroid. Uh coincidences do happen. What if an asteroid was heading right for the center of New York City and the United States says, Uh oh, the Russians must this must I'm just wondering, could that happen? That's the question I'm asking about this. I'm not saying that that would happen. I'm just saying, could it happen? Uh, 
Now, the Fed. Their solution to the mess they created, they're going to tighten and loosen at the same time. <laughs> this is their plan. They're planning on leaving interest rates where they are, but they're going to cut back on their quantitative tightening, is the plan. That's the plan, to cut back on the quantitative tightening. Uh, <laughs> you know, so, so that, in a way, is loosening, because once the quantitative tightening's gone, the next step is quantitative easing. I don't know what the problem with this computer is, but uh, I'm going to close out a few of these pages and see if that helps. Because, uh, I don't know, it's saying memory's low, but I know the memory's up up to date in this computer, and it's just being, it does this some, sometimes, you know. I mean, it's not, it hasn't got tons of memory. It's, I think it's got 8 gigabytes of memory. But that should be enough. I mean, it's supposed to only take like two big gigabytes, I think, to run Windows. New York AG says that she'll seize Donald Trump's property if he can't pay the U.S. $454 million civil fraud debt. New York. This is coming from New York. Donald Trump could be at risk of losing some of his prized properties if he can't pay a staggering New York civil fraud penalty. With interest, he owes the state nearly $454 million, and the amount is going up by $87,502 each day. So they're putting it up higher each day by $87,502 each day. They're raising the price up. It says New York Attorney General, General Letitia James told ABC News on Tuesday that she will seek to seize some of the former president's assets if he's unable to cover the bill from Judge Arthur... I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. It's too hard to pronounce. Uh, anyway, there you go on that. That's what's happening on that. Dealing with this stupid computer constantly. Not enough memory. Okay. <laughs> now, Biden made some comments about Putin. It says, during a campaign fundraiser in San Francisco, the U.S. president called the Russian counterpart a crazy SOB. Uh, you guys know what SOB is. Uh, now, the Kremlin has spoke back, and it slams Biden's comments on Russia's Putin as disgracing the United States. It says the Kremlin has lashed out at the United States, President Joe Biden, saying his comments about the Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin were a poor attempt to appear like a Hollywood cowboy. Now, off in Israel today, Israel is bombarding Gaza. Uh, they're bombarding Rafa, a city called Rafa. And there's a ground offensive that is looming. There's 1.4 million Palestinians displaced. They've shot shelter in the city that borders on Egypt, the city called Rafa. There's 1.4 million people there. And it looks like the picture here... It looks like the basically that city of 1.4 million people is being turned to rubble. Utter rubble. That's what it looks like in the picture to me. This picture. And I, I, it says, in the picture it says, A view of the destroyed Al-Frog Mosque, Al-Frog Mosque, and damaged buildings after Israel attacks on the uh, Shabarua neighborhood in Rafa. So that is Rafa. That's what it looks like now. And there's 1.4 million people living there? Boy. <sighs> what can I say? Now, the silver price today. We're at 2277 today, the silver price. And it's down 9 cents on the day so far. 2277 from 2288 to 2277. Looks like it's going up right now, though. Starting to go back up again a little bit. 
gold today. We're looking at 2035 for gold. It's down two dollars and twenty cents on the day so far. So gold's maintaining up above two thousand bucks. Uh, I'll tell you guys, I see a massive gold and silver run coming in the in the near future. I'm gonna close out a few more of these pages so that the doesn't bother me. <laughs> There, maybe now it'll function a little bit better. So anyway, gold's at 2023. Uh, so what we're looking at is, is we're on the front side right now of a massive bull rally in the gold and silver that's coming. But what's going to really help fuel this bull rally is the fact that we've got a divided world. We've got the bricks on one side and NATO and their Western allies on the other side. And the BRICS are putting an awful lot of faith in gold. This is why China and Russia have been storing gold away for a very long time. Uh, it's old school finance. Now, the West has got their new school finance with Bitcoin stuff, but, I mean, it's... The BRICs are, are, have got in their mind to uh, change the established order of the way things are right now with the U.S. dollar dominance and the petrodollar. And the petrodollar has been being the, dis, dismembered, is the way I would put it, over the, over the past period of time. And so what's going to happen is, is as the... Fiat currencies become a more and more shaky ground as time progresses. It's going to lead to more interest in holding your money not in paper assets, but in this is only going to be a progressive sort of thing. It's going to lead to a, a massive worldwide bull run in gold and silver. And you guys have got to know, I could see, uh, like, Back in the 1800s and stuff, they had something called a gold rush. Gold rush is happening. And in this modern era, they, like a lot of these places where they've been mined, gold's been mined, you know, they get down to what's called tailings and they close the mine or whatever because it's not profitable any longer. But you get a massive gold rally and gold goes to the upside and becomes much more precious than it is today. A lot of these areas where there's tailings left from these old mines and stuff, modern-day prospectors will head to those areas if it becomes profitable again to mine. And it could create actual gold rushes in the future. Now, this is one of these things I, uh, that I'm proposing that's a, a future event that's going to happen, I think. You see... Just like I proposed the homelessness crisis ahead of time. I told you guys about it ahead of time, and I was proposing that there was going to be a massive influx of homeless. Well, we're still in the process of that. It's going to grow. Homelessness is going to grow much bigger than it is now, much more profound, and become a much bigger problem for America. But this is something else that I'm proposing that in the future, and not into the distant future, maybe a couple years from now. An awful lot of people are gonna are gonna be buying gold pans, and 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 shovels and stuff, just like it was back in the in the day, because gold's gonna go up so high in price, so fast, so rapidly, that all of a sudden, right now, what they mine, like like an amateur prospector, right now, might go out and he might make fifty bucks in a day, mining gold, and work and work for six hours or something. It's worth it. He could make more at McDonald's right now. But you see gold do a, a move of like 30 times what it is now or 20 times up what it is now. All of a sudden that $50 he was going to make now becomes 10 times that or 500 a day or 1,000 a day. And suddenly it's worth it. And they're out there again. A new gold rush. I'm serious, guys. It could happen, really. It not just could happen. I'm thinking it will happen. Now, in the cryptocurrency markets today, Bitcoin is at 51,645. 
So it's holding its gains. It's come down a little bit, but not that much. It was over 52,000. Now it's 51,656. Ethereum, 2984. And XRP is at 54.4 cents. Now the Dow Jones Industrial Average today. It's up 210 points on the day so far at 38,827. As you can see, she's at her all-time high right now, or, or very close to it. It's almost 39,000 Dow right now. Taking a look at uh, crude oil today. Crude oil is at $78.20. It's up 28 cents on the day. It's been flirting with that $80 price now for, for, for the last number of days, four or five days. Bonds and rates. Trying to refresh the page. Just give me a second, guys. I'm going to have to... Page is not responding. Business and... Honest to God. <laughs> Let me see what happens here. Come on, come on. I got a show to do. I can't wait on this page to respond. Page is not responding. Wait. Oh, it's painful. Bonds and rates. I want to complete the show. But there's not much movement today on the bonds. I guess I'm just going to have to... I mean, it's coming toward the tail. If this was toward the start of the show, I would just start all over again and have to do another show. But being as it's almost toward the tail end of the show today, <laughs> you know, I'm going to complete the show regardless because I ain't doing all this show again a second time just because this computer isn't going to respond when we're this close to the end of the show. Let me try closing out a couple of these pages and see what happens here. Now, all those other pages have been closed out. Come on. You can do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Generally, when I do a reboot of this computer, generally when it comes back online, it doesn't pull this garbage. Every computer, you ever notice, guys? Every single computer out there, they all have their little quirks. You ever notice that? Some of them won't do this, and another computer will do that, and another computer won't do this, and another computer will do that. And they all have their own little quirks. Very seldom, and I've had a lot of computers uh, over the years... Very seldom have I ever had a computer that just functioned perfectly on everything. Run all the software programs perfect and everything. Generally, when you get a computer like that, <laughs> you know, generally it breaks on you. <laughs> you say, oh, I got the perfect computer. It does everything just perfect and nice and fast. And bing, something blows on it. The motherboard blows. <laughs> you know, it's all, that's the Murphy's Law, you know what I mean? But then you get these other computers that have their little quirks and stuff, and they'll keep running forever. Same thing with your cars, you know. You get a nice car, really, everything runs perfect on it. You're driving it down the road, and all of a sudden the transmission goes plunk. You know, but you got some car that has gives you a lot of troubles. Like it's 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 got a shimmy in the back end, choo -choo 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 -choo. and it may maybe it's got a little something wrong with the here and there, like the window won't crank up or whatever, you know, or something. It'll drive forever. That's Murphy's law. Okay, I'm not going to wait for this thing any longer. I waited long enough. Thank you guys for listening to my show. The dollar index is a, a, a dollar index and bonds and rates today. You're going to have to wait until tomorrow because I just can't get this thing to respond right now. And I got to reboot it in order to get it to respond. I appreciate my audience out there. Appreciate you guys. And we'll catch you guys in tomorrow's show. And have a great afternoon. Bye bye.